So today we are talking about religious freedom, and I'm going to talk about Citizens Amendment Act 2019, which has been passed by uh, the Indian Parliament. So religious freedom has been seen for many aspects and has been discussed in many world conferences, events, and dialogues, etc. The question is, how do we address it in a world where nations themselves adhere to discrimination based on one's religious belief or make laws which raise a direct question mark on religious freedom? Although we are time barred, but I'm going to raise my voice against the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 of India, uh, which basically defeats the purpose of a secular constitution and the rule of law in India. Rule of law is again one of the most important fabrics which weaves the nation together and Indian constitution promotes the application of rule of law in the country. The Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 grants citizenship to migrants belonging to Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Christian, Jain and Parsi communities who came to India from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan on or before 31st December 2014. So they very conveniently left out the whole Muslim migrants. I think it's perhaps one of the most controversial laws passed by one of the largest democracies in the world. So some are, while some people are very impressed by the law, few are curious and while many of us are puzzled. So the Citizenship Amendment Act clearly defies human dignity, international human rights. It has pushed millions of people into the verge of statelessness. In effect, Muslims are singled out and rendered stateless and their life ending up in detention centers, which has been planned and executed by the, pre of, uh, by the present Indian government under the leadership of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So the act makes religion as a precondition for the enjoyment of right to nationality, which is the key to the rest of universal human rights ensuring in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And the right to life, liberty, and security of person is nullified by the arbitrary deprivation of citizenship. I think many of you would agree with me with the fact that the detention based on this arbitrary act is surely an arbitrary detention, and it runs against the Article 9 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And this law further horribly actually mirrors the Nuremberg Laws decreed by Hitler's Nazi Germany in 1935. And the rape citizenship law, major among the Nuremberg laws, professed that only those of German or related blood were eligible to be rape citizens. And the remainder were classed as state subjects without any citizenship rights. And later the laws were expanded to include the Romanian people and the black people. Another instance in the citizenship law 1982 enacted in Myanmar, which deprived the Rohingya people of the citizenship in Myanmar, despite generations of the residents in Myanmar, the Rohingya people to date are persecuted in Myanmar. The Indian government has to say they did not, they did not exclude the, in, the Muslim community from their uh, bill, from their act, but uh, only people, the, minority, the, the religious minority people in, in these three countries where they're persecuted. But they have not taken into account the Rohingyas who are persecuted, plainly persecuted in Myanmar. I think, uh, uh, judiciary is an important um, part of the state and in India there have been hundreds of petitions at the Supreme Court and the judiciary under the political wings favored the Citizenship Amendment Act and uh, billions like myself do not agree to such a dis discriminatory law which is ensuring citizenship based on religious uh, belief. Now um, experts in India argue that the law is in against Muslims and if such is the case then how come they haven't in, in, included the most uh, persecuted Rohingyas and I'm very proud to belong to a country Bangladesh under the auspices of our honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is currently hosting over 700,000 Rohingyas refugees with our limited resources when very conveniently they worship their terrorism then. So I would say that Differences only multiply hatred and instigates more hostility and thus infringes universal human rights, be it the Israel-Palestine ongoing conflict or the Uyghur Muslims forced in massive camps in Xinjiang, China, the Sunni Shia conflict across many Muslim-majority countries, and more recently, uh, we've seen in the news the brutal uh, persecution of members of Xinjiang uh, Church in South Korea are matters of utter human shame. 
I think uh, at this day and age where the world discusses cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, we should not instigate hatred or create differences through practices of communism. In that way, it only means the world has not moved much from the colonial era. As a millennial and as a lawyer myself, I believe the world has come a long way from the abolition of slavery to civil rights movement to universal declaration of human rights. And now is the time to act and not create hatred or division or instigate hatred through discrimination and hurting human dignity. So but most definitely there should be more webinars like this, creating awareness of human dignity, which is an inherent human right. And it's all worth the effort, it's all worth the awareness. Thank you very much.